Because this is a unit to conversion problem, that is a problem where we're given some value and we're asked to convert it into a different set of units. We are going to follow the steps that I outlined in an earlier video. The first step is write down the value that you are given that you want to do the conversion to. In this problem, it asks how many hours there are in one year. So what value do I know that I'm going to be converting into something else? Yeah, it's the year. So I will start with step one by just write that, writing down one year. Step two is write a set of parentheses to the right of the term that you just wrote down. And we're done with step two. Now step three is write down units, no numbers yet, inside the parenthesis that will cancel out the units you start at and eventually go until you get to the units you're trying to get to. That is the destination units. In this case, the question asks how many hours are in a year, so what units will my final answer have? Yeah, they're going to be hours, so I'll just kind of write that down and take note of that. I want to eventually arrive at hours. That's my destination units. Now, as I've stated elsewhere, the units in the denominator here will almost always be the same as the units in the numerator of the previous term. In other words, I have year up top, so down here I'm going to put year in the bottom. I eventually want to get to hours. Now in order to do that, I need to put some other unit up here that is directly relatable to year. Do we know something that is relatable to a year? Like how many of something is there in a year? Yeah, I think we know how many days there are in a year, so I could put days up here. Now I know that does not get us to our final uh, answer of our units of hours, so I'm gonna have to put another set of parentheses. This year, of course, gets canceled out by that year. Now, guess what units are gonna go in the basement here? Yeah, as before, they're gonna be the same units that were present in the attic, or I guess the upstairs or numerator in the previous term, so I'm gonna write down days. Now I need to be able to write down days and put a different unit up top that relates directly to days in some relatable way and hopefully gets us closer to hours. Do we know how many hours there are in a day? In other words, can I directly relate hours to days? Are those two relatable terms? The answer is yes, which means I can put hours up top. We are now done with step three because you'll notice that days cancel each other out and I'm left with the units that I'm trying to get to. Now this is a tip with this unit conversion dimensional analysis stuff. Oftentimes if you have no clue what you're doing in general chemistry, but you do keep track of units and you know the units that your answer should have, you can sometimes just write down all of the things that you're given and multiply or divide them in the whatever order you need to in order to cancel out units and arrive at the destination units, the units that your answer should have. So I don't advise not knowing what you're doing, but if you're in a, you know, sort of a situation where that happens to be the case, it's a great strategy to take. Make sure you cancel out units and line up all of your units correctly so that you get to your destination units properly. Make sense? So now we move on to step four, which is insert all of your numbers in their respective locations and make sure to put them down in the correct spots. So for example, if I have one year, how many days is that? Yeah, it's 365. Now anytime I write down a set of numbers, I always step back and make sure that I put them down in the correct location because it's really easy to flip them if you're being too quick. Even I do it sometimes, and I've been doing this for a long time. In other words, if I accidentally put a one up top and 365 at the bottom, that would be wrong. And then the way I do it is I write down the numbers and then I ask myself, did I put those numbers in the right location? Is there 365 days in one year? Yeah, yeah, there is, so that's okay. If I'd done it the opposite, one day has 365 years, yeah, that would be wrong. You see what I'm saying here? So now we'll do the same thing over here. One day has how many hours? Yeah, it's 24, okay? So we're now done with step four. Step five is multiply everything out, canceling out all the units, and I sort of pre-canceled them here to arrive at our final answer, which I'm gonna do on our calculator to arrive at 8,760 hours. And then we go to step six, which is be sure to round your final answer according to your significant figure rules, which I described in an earlier video linked to below. So what are the sig fig rules here? Well, sig fig rules, because we're multiplying and dividing here, say that we need to round our final answer to have the same exact number as whichever term has the smallest number of significant figures. Now this can get confusing sometimes because remember, the number of significant figures that a term has is really the result of how accurate that number is, essentially. So when we're asked to convert one year into hours, are we talking about exactly one year, or are we talking about 
maybe one year and that was measured and we're rounding it. Yeah, I think we're actually talking about exactly one year. The question is asking about a theoretical exact one year. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's not talking about a year that you measured and therefore it has some built-in error in it. Therefore, even though this only has one digit, you could rewrite it as being 1.0, okay? Or you could write it as 1.000000 years, and that's exactly the same thing that we're talking about. In other words, remember that terms that you measure or that someone measured that are fallible because uh, based on the instrumentation or weakness of the instrumentation or imperfection of the instrumentation they're using, they have a limited number of significant figures. But terms that are either definitional, absolute, exact, non-rounded numbers have infinite significant figures. And the same thing would be true if we're talking about a theoretical exact, exact, exact one year, even if it gives us just a number one here. I assume it has infinity significant figures because we are talking about exactly one year, not some real year that was measured and, and is somehow fungible or not, not exact, okay? What about this? Does one year have exactly 365 days? Again, we, we're gonna assume that the term on the bottom is exactly one year, 1 1.0000000000, infinity significant figures here, but is the 365 exactly, exactly, exact? It turns out the answer is no. There is actually a little bit of wiggle room around that, which is why we have leap years every four years. So this actually is a rounded limitation. So when we look for rounded terms or values, that's where we see imperfections, and imperfections are where we hone in and focus for counting significant figures. In other words, this term right here has three significant figures. Now what about days? Does a day have exactly, exactly 24 hours? And again, I'm not going to look at the one and assume that is only one sig fig. I'm gonna assume that we're talking about exactly one zero or one day, which could be interpreted as being 1.0000000 to infinity times. So I'm not gonna look at that as being my limitation here. I'm gonna look at the top term. Is one day exactly 24 hours, exact, exact, exact? Or is that a really close approximation that humanity is sort of rounded to get close? It turns out that it is the latter. There are in fact, believe it or not, you can look this up, leap days and leap minutes and leap seconds actually based on the rotation of the earth around the sun and, and you know our time measurements not being exactly perfect and sometimes the rotations or revolutions I guess uh, of the earth around the sun or rotations around axis and stuff not being exactly perfect corresponding to our time measurements. Anyway. Rambling tangent, but the point is, this is our going to be our limiting term. That has two sig figs, okay? So what does that mean? It means that I'm gonna round my final term to have exactly two sig figs. So um, I go here to my, you know, I kind of read it from left to right, 8760, and I'm gonna keep these two, the leftmost ones, and this one will be rounded up because it's larger than five, so it'll be 88 hundred hours if I'm rounding it by sig fig rules. If you want, now that has two sig figs because as we've learned elsewhere, zeros to the right of non-zero integers do not count as significant unless they're to the right of a decimal place. You can, if you wish, rewrite that in a scientific notation as 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third hours if you wish. Either way, it has two significant figures and that is the correct answer to this question.